Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the March 27th board meeting. I'd like to call this meeting to order and ask you to join me in our Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I am Matt Kampick. I'm the president of our association. We'll go down the table. Dan Lendiger, vice president. Mark Eckert, uh, treasurer. Okay, we'll Sean, do it again. Larry Santora, assistant treasurer. Sean Kreiderman, secretary. Chuck Hill, director. Denise Lexell, director. Walter Yazzie, general manager. Charlie Shalas, recording secretary. I have a little housekeeping to do. We've got three sets of um, meeting minutes to approve. I need a motion to approve the February 6th board working meeting minutes. So move. I need a second. Discussion. Discussion from our residents. All in favor, please raise your hand and say aye. Aye. I need a motion to approve the February 19th board working meeting minutes. I need a second. I have a motion and a second to approve the February 19th board working meeting minutes. Any board discussion? Any resident discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, raise your hand and say aye. Aye. Thank you. And my last piece of housekeeping, our February 28th board meeting minutes. I need a motion to approve those minutes. Any resident discussion? All in favor, please raise your hand and say aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Next on our agenda is our strategic plan update. My colleagues Mark Eckert and Sean Kreiderman will be providing that update today. I guess I'm first, so I'll just, I think I'll more just sit here instead of standing up, more comfortable. Uh, I guess uh, the beginning of, uh, of the PowerPoint, I guess it's just, uh, just to review or restate the mission statement. Again, this is what uh, this results are to. Uh, and again, I'm not going to read the mission statement, good, but you've all seen it, I'm sure, many times. Uh, the uh, next uh, slide is the uh, vision statement. Uh, and again, uh, I think you've all seen this probably many times if you've come to any of the previous meetings over the last number of months. So, uh, so just to review, each of the committees has been given a set of goals by the board. Uh, this is all tied to the strategic plan of trying to coordinate things better uh, globally in the HOA. It's never been done before. So this is the first year each of the committees has been given these goals. Uh, and as part of that, uh, to make sure we're communicating what's going on, uh, there's two committees that are going to be giving updates, or two board members that are the liaisons are going to be giving updates in every board meeting. So uh, this meeting, uh, it's me and Sean. Uh, we're going to be doing a quick update on what's going on with the goals of the committees that we're involved with as the liaisons. Next month, it'll be two other committees to other liaison board members giving updates for their committee. So that's kind of a given idea of what's going on here is why we're doing this. This is all part of the plan of trying to uh, do a much better job of communicating the strategic plan and what's being worked on with regard to that plan. So uh, with that, I am the liaison for the finance committee. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through here, hopefully fairly quickly, just a summary of the goals that are on the strategic plan for the finance committee and kind of just where we are with all those goals. 
And then there's a couple of goals that I've included that are really my personal goals that I'm working on that aren't actually committee goals, but uh, I put them all in the same place because they're all things that are going to be worked on. So uh, the next slide, we can start with that. So, uh, again, the, the goal three is the financial stewardship, uh, and the main goal for that uh, is to ensure the HOA finances are well managed by providing sufficient revenues to fund operations, facilities, depreciation, and provide all the resources we need to achieve our mission, which is to have a, a healthy HOA and enjoy our lifestyle and provide adequate repairs for everything that we own. Next slide. So I realized I tried to break this up so the writing wasn't too small, uh, but uh, hopefully you can read it. Uh, but anyway, what, I've, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to review. There's actually seven goals uh, that are in there, and a couple of my personal goals are kind of embedded in there because it's the same idea. So, so the first goal that I've got on, that we uh, have uh, accepted is the basically review the financial systems and budget processes to achieve financial success. So that's a really probably one of the most important goals. So to give you an idea of what's going on in the finance committee or what's going on with that, uh, the finance uh, has a finance committee as a subcommittee that's working with the staff on the audit. Uh, that's done every year and that's being worked on right now. The audit has already started and the goal is to of course get that done with the next three or four months. Uh, there is another finance subcommittee working to evaluate investments and make recommendations. That's an ongoing uh, committee that's always existed. They continue to do that and look at that money as money becomes available on where we should put it to best uh, make uh, earn income for the HOA. Uh, the third one is the creation of a cost-saving tracking document for the TUNE contract. This is something that actually we started with Invited when we signed the invited contract in 2022. And the goal for that is to come up with a document that can estimate the actual benefits of the contract. Uh, we certainly know what the costs are because we have a contract. Uh, there is a multitude of benefits that we've enjoyed and we're in the process of getting that put together so we can present it to the residents. Uh, so far, it looks like we're doing great from a standpoint of getting a lot more benefit than the cost on the contract in all the different areas. But uh, that's being worked on now and hopefully in some time in the near future we'll be able to present the results of that in a future board meeting. Uh, the credit card fee program was implemented March 1st. Uh, so one of the goals for the uh, finance committee is to track, come up with a way of tracking the benefits of that, uh, both the cost and the benefits. Uh, they are working on that, although the first actual financial report isn't going to come out till April for the month of March, so it's a little early for us to really be able to do anything. But it is one of the goals, and that's the current status. And then an analysis of the financial report design, uh, coding and process. So there's some things that we need to work on with regard to the, the way the financial reports are done to maybe have a little more consistency. And so one of the things that with the... Uh, committee is working on with uh, our director of finance, Terry, is to kind of work on that and see what can be done. And that's in process also. That's going to be something that's going to take some time, but it's being worked on. So the second goal that's on this, sheet, uh, this page is develop an easy to read dashboard for reporting finances to the residents. One of the things that we want to accomplish this year is to do maybe a, a better job of making something that's easy to, to understand uh, for residents that aren't trained in finances. Uh, that is something that's uh, started to be worked on. It's not real far yet, but the goal is to, whatever it is, whether it's going to be more pie charts, whatever it is, something that's going to be uh, easier to understand when we do presentations like this every month. So that's another goal uh, for number two. And then the other uh, goal and thing under that is the staff and the committee are finalizing a list of KPIs to track uh, for each of the different departments so that we can include that in the report. So that again, we've got some key indicators that are easy to understand. Uh, next slide. Uh, so number three, uh, the, the goal was to annually update uh, a rolling five-year forecast for operating costs and revenue requirements. This has always been included in the budget. Uh, we need to 
track where we are from a five-year standpoint. Uh, I added the goal seven right below this because they're really very related in the way we're approaching it. The goal seven was to produce and maintain a 10-year reserve forecast for future facilities master plans. So we've always done uh, a, we have a 30-year forecast that's with the reserve study that we get. We do a five-year forecast for that uh, in the business plan. Uh, we do a five-year, we want to do a five-year rolling forecast for the operating cost. Uh, one of the good things about the results of us doing this in-depth study for the assessment is we had to really do a 10-year analysis, putting all of it together. Because you really can't do a financial analysis of where you're going to be totally from a financial standpoint unless you include both reserve costs, capital improvement costs, operating costs. Everything's got to be rolled up. And that's what had to be done to do a viable 10-year financial plan that makes any sense. So the good news is all that work that was done by that RRF group kind of created the basis for creating something that can, we can combine these two things. And so that's why I put them together as a common item because that 10-year financial model that was used, as you can see, uh, was come out of the RRF group, is something that I think eventually we're going to get that in a single document that can be a workable document. Number four uh, goal was to maintain and annually review the capital reserve study to analyze all assets in the community, predict major repairs, replacements, and aspirational funding requirements. Again, uh, the capital reserve study. Uh, reserve study is uh, done by a third-party company every three years. Reserve Advisors is the one we've used in the past. Uh, it, it projects out, actually, for 30 years, the projected costs for all of the 598 assets that we have. Uh, and uh, one of the things we have to do is to obviously maintain that so, uh, and hopefully make it more accurate. So one of the things that we're going to do to try to improve that process is create what I'd call a rolling reserve study. In the past, the way the reserve study was done is we got it every three years, and it's a static document, and then every three years when we redo it, Reserve Advisors comes in and spends days with all of our staff, looking at all of our assets, trying to in, you know, investigate with the staff what happened the last three years, what did we spend money on, what were the costs, and then they have to you know, uh, correct the reserve study to incorporate things that changed, either costs or things that got delayed, now the, t the timing is different. So that's a lot of work to go through that, and so the goal here is to try to create a a study that's actually a living document that's going to be changed as we do these things so that every three years we don't have to start from scratch, that we're actually going to have a current document at the end of every year uh, that's going to make it a lot easier to do that process. So that's what this creation of a rolling reserve study is. And then the other part of that is we also keep a list of uh, what we call a disposal asset list. So when we get rid of a reserve item, whether it's a truck or whatever it is, uh, to track what happens to that asset. Do we sell it? Do we give it away? Uh, is it so bad in shape that it's garbage we just have to throw it away? But we track that kind of stuff. And there are a few things that we actually keep. We don't keep them as an asset, but we keep them for repair parts. There's a few things that golf does for that. So this is one of the things that we have a good start on it. Uh, we just need to complete it and continue to add more things to it. So that's the other thing that's on the goal for this year to work on uh, that, again, the, the uh, uh, Finance Committee is working on. Uh, next slide. So the fifth goal was to continue to provide monthly financial information to the members. And again, this is something we always want to do. We issue monthly reports. Uh, so the goal is to develop a summary analytics tab to be added to the financial report, again, with the idea of making our financial reports a little easier for somebody who's maybe not trained in finances to understand. And so this is another goal that we've got that we're going to be working on this year to try to improve the readability, if you want to say, of our financial uh, reports for all of you residents. Number six is establish a process for reviewing key performance indicators, KPIs, for revenue generating amenities. So under that goal, 
we've got, uh, first of all, we have to evaluate the KPI recommendations from the consultant Real Foods. This has got to do with the food and beverage. Real Foods gave us a, a very in-depth analysis of our food and beverage business. They've got a number of uh, suggestions they've got for KPIs that we should be working on. And so this is uh, going to be part of that analysis. Uh, we also want to track the uh, uh, food and beverage loyalty program. The, the food and beverage loyalty program is something that we've instituted, uh, but trying to measure the success of it is a little bit of a challenge as to what kind of benefits are we getting versus the cost, and that's another goal that's gonna, it's getting worked on. Uh, this uh, goal that I've got is evaluating the KPIs for some of the other revenue generating amenities, golf, theater, fitness, and lifestyle. Again, trying to figure out how do we measure the benefits uh, of, the, of those programs. You know, most of our amenities don't have any income, so there isn't really a, a way to measure any kind of financial benefit for roads because we don't charge for using the roads. We do charge for some of these amenities and therefore they have some income that offsets their costs. So trying to figure out a KPI for that, uh, that can we, we can present that information in maybe a better form to the residents. And then again, just to clarify the amenity KPI goals and expectations, I think some of the problems that we have is that we haven't done a good job of clarifying what the actual goal should be for some of our amenities that earn income. Uh, you know, we are not a profit corporation, we're a service corporation. Uh, sometimes uh, the thought is that something should be making a profit when in fact that's not the reason we have amenities here. We have amenities here to enjoy our lifestyle and we certainly want to keep the cost of them uh, as low as we can but none of them are here to make a profit. They're here so that you can enjoy them and enjoy your retirement and what you're paying your dues for. So that's something I think we can maybe communicate a little more clearly to people so there isn't so much confusion about that. So uh, anyway, that's the summary kind of of where we are with the goals from the finance committee standpoint. And I'll let Sean go ahead and talk about her committee. Okay. Yes, 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 I'm on, okay. Goal six, effective communications. SBHOA2 will improve its two-way communications with members and staff to keep them well informed on all HOA-related issues and activities and provide timely responses to questions and inquiries. Goal six has Four objectives. Objective number one, produce a communications plan and calendar. Okay, so now, Mr. Rick, skip to the slide after my goals. I don't know what you're doing on that one. We are grateful for you, though. All right, keep going. Next. Is that me? Not yet. Not yet. One more. Keep going. Keep more. There I am, six. All right, now then... The next one, then, and like I said, that goal number one is to produce a communications plan and calendar. Now go to the next one. Thank you. There it is. There it is in the visual. So here's what, what you need to do if you want to get to the calendar. We had several people request, and I concur, that we need to have a board and committee meeting calendar that tells you the place, the day, the time of all the board meetings, all the committee meetings. So if you go to your sbhoa2.org, then it follow the arrow to the next one, which is you log in. Log in. I can project. I don't need a microphone. <laughs> I'm projecting all this. Okay, I don't know why this went off. But anyway, go to the next one. That's sbhoa2.org. sbhoa2.org, thank you. And then um, you have two ways to get to the board and committee meetings calendar. You can either go to the top where it says SB2 app, um, and that's on your phone, or you can stay, go back to your computer and then go again to SBHOA2 board and committee meetings. So there's two ways to get to the, on the website, to get to, or on your phone, to get to, get to the calendar and see what's going on. So basically goal number one has been accomplished, but we're going to keep updating because we want it to be accurate. 
if a committee meeting or a board meeting changes, then it, it'll be sent out in an email blast. Okay, back to the other one, Mr. Rick, please. Okay, goal number two, use the video to send messages to members and staff on a consistent basis. Um, that's already been done. They did a video, an AI video, artificial intelligence video on how to access the app on your phone. It was on the website, but then if you clicked on it, it showed you how to access the web on your phone or access your profile, your own personal um, profile on your phone. So that's already been done. And then uh, number three, evaluate new technology to improve communication efforts. That's an ongoing process. Remember, we're only in March, so we just started this in January. And then number four, uh, response time. We want to make sure that we have a re response time timeline within the business day or within 24 hours. And as a communications champion and the person that keeps, con keeps contact or contract uh, of all the communications we get when my fellow board members send them to me, I'm proud to say that our board responds within the next six hours. We might not give you the answer because we're looking it up, but we respond and on average, we've responded in less than six hours during the business week. We like our weekends, too. So um, in three or four more months, I'll be back to give you another update on the communications. Thank you. Thank you, Mark and Sean. Appreciate your updates. It's now time for our general manager's update. Walter, the floor is yours, sir. All right. Thank you, Matt. Good morning to everybody um, again. Glad to be up here and to update you on things that the staff is doing. Um, a lot of times I'd go through different dates and stuff that's coming up, but you know what I'm doing right for the rest of this year, I'm going to be pushing you towards the website or the app on your phone to go look up that information. Um, our marketing team has done a great job at putting all that information at your fingertips. So I'll direct you there. And what I want to do today is just kind of give you an update on other things that the staff is doing. Um, in our accounting office, of course, it's that time of year where the auditors come in. The auditors showed up on Monday and they're here all week, so Dave and Terry are quite busy providing the information that they're requesting and supporting that effort. Um, you saw about a lot about KPIs. Later on in this meeting, I'm gonna have a presentation on KPIs, so I'll save that information for that presentation. Uh, the fitness center, uh, as many of you know, the fitness center is doing great. Uh, there's many of you that try to get into classes and it's full. Um, you know, so the classes are filling up quickly and you have to get on the website right away to try to, try to get your spot there. Um, other things, we're looking at the revenue there. Again, the revenue is great. Um, like three months in a row, they've had record revenue. Um, they were pulling in around $30,000 in revenue, and last April, I looked at information from last April in 2023, they were only pulling in about 15000 So, um, from what I'm seeing, they almost doubled what they're bringing in from about a year ago. So, um, Jeanette's done a great job with the program and expanding with the additional space that she's been given with the Rincon Room. So that's going great. Um, food and beverage is just rocking it. Um, they're doing a great job. They're really busy. So if you haven't been lately and you're still saying, well, when I went last year, it wasn't that great. Well, you know, come back. It's, it's a lot better this year. Um, Easter at the Mountain View Bar and Grill, they have over 340 people coming. That is pretty much sold out for Easter at the Mountain View Bar and Grill up at the Preserve. They have 120 reservations, which again also um, sells that out up there for Easter at the Preserve. At the restaurants, uh, combined numbers for Preserve and Mountain View. Um, I think for this last month, 12,619 people have come to eat. So what I'm saying is the restaurants are doing great. They're providing great food, great service. I think you'll be well pleased if you haven't visited lately. Um, again, I got a caveat that it's not 100%. Every once in a while you may get a cold dish and you have to ask the server to uh, take it back or whatever. But um, as a whole, 
they are doing awesome there at the restaurants. Another effort that we've been making is during budget season, we always get asked as a staff, well, how come you didn't fill up all these positions? There's a lot of positions that are open. Uh, this year, we've been making extra effort through our human resources to um, hire folks and make sure that the positions are filled. So right now, we have 11 job openings across the staff. And last year, we were averaging somewhere between uh, 15 and 20 positions open. So I think we're making progress there where we're hiring the folks and getting, getting our departments staffed. Uh, in lifestyles, um, they wanted to send out a thank you for all the volunteers that helped with the 2024 Collegiate um, Golf Tournament with the college um, female tournament. So they wanted to say thank you for all the volunteers that helped out with that. Uh, a little bit from golf maintenance. Again, a couple things that they're waiting for in golf maintenance. Um, they're still waiting for the decision on exactly when the front nine of the Mountain View uh, golf course will open. And there's also some punch list items that still have to be developed by the contractor before we get there. Um, they're also awaiting some final approval for the 2024 dates for airification and overseas. So um, they've got those on the books. They're just waiting for approval on that. Uh, golf operations. Uh, you know, Matt left and Mike is now um, right now acting as the golf um, pro director there. So he reports on the 2024 Collegiate uh, Tournament. He said uh, South Florida were the champions, and he reports that they made uh, $4,500 on green fees. He also reports that um, the lady member guests went well. They had over 40 guests from across the country come and play. So they're doing a lot of things there at the golf course also. They're very busy. Um, he had a fitting day on March 22nd and says that they brought in about uh, $19,000 in sales off of that fitting day. So another thing that Mike's done is he's talked to the Saddlebrook Rotary and on April 22nd, um, they'll be coming back to Saddlebrook. I guess they had gone down to Oro Valley the past couple of years and now he's got them to come back up here to Saddlebrook to golf. So good on Mike on all his efforts there. And finally, um, over to marketing. Uh, again, marketing is helping out again with goal number six and communication. We actually held our first meeting with a group of realtors. And so what we're doing is meeting with realtors because now that we're pretty much built out only just about 100 or so houses to build out, now our focus has to change to resales. And so we're making an effort to get with the realtors, see what they need, see how we as an HOA can help them um, resale houses here and, and change our focus to that market. And I think, Matt, that's uh, everything I got for now. Thank you, Walter. Ray? Ray is going to provide us an update on his projects. Can I take just a real quick second? Walter, um, I dumped the, the $4,000 you, you mentioned from the collegiate that Mike gave you, um, I, I think it's a much higher number than that. I think it's more like about 20, but I, I can't confirm the exact number. But I do think it's a little bit higher than that. He okay, he did say he did say green fees, so I'm not sure if that matters or yeah, not. Yeah, that that could be it. It's fourteen. It's fourteen thousand, is what. Uh, just oh, want to okay. Say. But anyway, it's okay. It's all good. Uh, another great tournament. The other thing I wanted to mention um, as well, um, just for uh, kind of an update, the Brook uh, this year. In uh, the month of my, January and February, the sales of the Brook year over year is up roughly 37% um, over the Mesquite sales in 2023. So we really appreciate people using and coming and having breakfast and lunch at the Brook. Uh, it's working well in that regard, and I think uh, very positive, like, Walter, you said the reviews have been very, very positive. So thanks for your team and all they're doing uh, with regard to that change. So thank you. All right. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for being here. I see a lot of familiar faces. 
So I'm going to be talking to you this morning about some of our common area efforts. Uh, I've brought my man Michael up here who is doing some great things and I've asked him to give you a readout of some of his recent activities. Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm not making it as a dramatic entrance as last time. Uh, first thing we did is this is a drainage problem that we had behind Mountain View Bull, um, building between the admin and the arts and craft. All the water was running right into the uh, slab. So what we've done is we recorrected it. Now it is flowing away and it's grading all the way down to um, moving the water away from the building. And to the next slide you will see um, more of the erosion that we had. Um, we also added and installed some gabions steps, um, which is something my crew has never done before. Um, and we've corrected this and done this so that uh, you have easier access back there for the facilities and people who are walking back there. Um, in the next slide here, I call the atrium, which is in the arts and craft area. We have eradicated some of the bigger bushes and we are converting that into more of a Zen butterfly garden. Um, we've added some new plants there that will be uh, staying uh, smaller, no more than 24 inches. In some cases, we've also added a Texas rosebud, which is a very unique tree. It actually, all the, um, you will see flowers growing up the bark of the tree. Um, and the next slide is this is, I understand we have weeds. We have weeds everywhere in common area. We, it is getting directed. This is at the, pit, um, this is at the pickleball courts where we have uh, mediated some of the weeds around the pickleball courts. I have a contractor coming in the end of this week, beginning of next week, and he will be starting to pay, uh, spray the post and pre-emergent in all of the common areas. So I am aware of it and I am on top of trying to get that taken care of. Um, and I believe the last one is for level four and level five. My, we are a little bit behind due to the fact of weather and some of the, um, some of the areas we are going beyond 38 feet. However, we are, we are still in um, the preserves in Unit 44A. We are going to be finishing up Unit 44A, 43, and 42 here, hopefully within the next uh, few weeks. Um, there, we are going through about 1,100 to 1,500 uh, feet a day of um, clearing. And if that's where we're at. Thank you, Michael. Good stuff. Uh, cleaning up our neighborhood. All right, I, uh, I'm gonna share with you a focus today on our roads. Uh, we recently had our road study completed. Um, we do a road study every three years, which rolls into then the reserve study. So we have over uh, 40 center line miles of roadway that we own and maintain. It's about 700,000 square yards. Um, so before I get into the details of that, I'm gonna just comment that um, the situation that we have in the preserve and that we've had in the preserve is not lost on us. Um, we are very aware and working um, to put together the history, the documentation of what's occurred in Unit 45, particularly. Um, and we have 44B right on its heels. So um, many of us expect maybe uh, some issues there with trench erosion like we've seen in Unit 45. But um, so that's the construction of the roads. What we're focusing on here with the road study is basically the condition of the asphalt, okay? 
So we have annual maintenance programs, um, and they're shown here. We have a crack seal program, which we've awarded, um, and this will be, um, be conducted in uh, the April timeframe. Uh, seal coat, uh, I've mentioned in the past that we had the 2023 seal coat didn't actually occur, but it was awarded, uh, and uh, that will get done uh, this spring, uh, as well as the 2024 seal coat. And then we've targeted um, mill and pave for units 27 and 29. And you'll see uh, later that this basically correlates to what has been um, uncovered in the road study. Next slide. So I mentioned um, by and large, our roads are in good condition. Um, roughly 72% of our roads show from the road study as being uh, good or excellent. Let me get to my page here. Um, and 4% of those roadways, the pink here, um, are in poor condition. Uh, roughly 25% are in fair condition. And you'll hear that we are addressing, over the next 10 years, uh, we will address all of those poor or fair conditioned roadways. They're already in the plan. Next slide. So this is a summary view of uh, the lower part of Saddlebrook 2, um, Desert View and Mountain View. And I show here uh, 2021 versus 2024. It doesn't show up very well here, but um, you can see here that Mountain View Boulevard, which was yellow previously, is now green. And that's because we mill and paved the entire length of that roadway over the last two years. Um, other roadways that have degraded a bit over those three years, um, Clubhouse Drive here. Um, there are a couple pink areas, um, though they're not showing up. Again, um, uh, I'm sorry, they were yellow previously, and now there are a couple pink. So uh, the plan uh, of record was for Clubhouse Drive to be mill and paved um, originally several years out. Um, so that roadway has degraded faster than we would have expected. Um, so the plan is actually to do a bunch of repair on that roadway this year, uh, preparing it for reconstruction next year. And the proposal is not to mill and pave it, but to chip seal it. Chip seal is about a third of the cost of a mill and pave process. So uh, here we see the preserve, or the upper part of Soderbrook 2. And similarly, uh, we've seen some road changes. Catalina Hill specifically was uh, in fairly good condition at the, at the time of the previous study, 2021. Um, and there are some sections now that have degraded, I, I would say, prematurely. So we will get those in our uh, road um, maintenance plan. Um, Units uh, 45, as you can see here, was purple, not really a part of the 2021 road study. Shows up as green. Um, again, this, the asphalt surface of that roadway is in fairly good condition. Uh, what's happening under the roadway is, uh, as we know, a different topic. Uh, and, well, that's okay. I was just gonna point out that you can see now 44B here. Um, is currently uh, under construction. I mentioned that we have a plan um, for uh, all the roadways that are in um, fair or poor condition uh, will be addressed uh, over the next 10 years. So I say reconstructed, some of those we will mill and pave and some of those we may do uh, some chip seal. But uh, this plan uh, has all of them included. Next slide, please. So, I'm um, sorry about the clarity of this, but 20, uh, in 2024, as I mentioned, we have the plan for unit 27 and 29. 2025, uh, we will do Clubhouse Drive. Um, I can't even read what unit that is. Um, 
2025. Uh, 33, Unit 33, um, we will reconstruct and um, so on and so forth. Um, we spend about $2 million a year uh, on average, as you can probably not see down here, but it's um, about a million dollar, mil, one and a half million dollars in, in reconstruction and about 500,000 in, um, in maintenance. Chip seal, crack seal, seal coat. All right, next slide, please. Um, the carryover project, that's, that concludes my uh, presentation on the roads. We'll take some questions if there are any um, at the end. Um, carryover projects, 2023, uh, the, the pro shops, um, we did a bunch of work at Mountain View. We're going to do a little bit of additional work at Mountain View and then also refresh the preserve. That plan is for that work to happen in May. Skip to the next couple, uh, two slides, please. All right. Um, so we did get some HVAC units as I discussed in the last, uh, in February. Uh, we now have an RFP out for bid for four additional units. It says three there, but that's incorrect. It's actually four. And by the way, we've now replaced um, about 90% of our HVAC units. I think we have nine remaining um, from the original. And one of the big motivations there is that the refrigeration is R22 that are in those last remaining units. That's not supported any longer. Um, we, we are required by law to change these out. So uh, we're well along in that plan. So we have nine more, as I said. So just a couple more years of that activity. Uh, Desert View Sport Court resurfacing. Um, I say here it was out for bid. We've actually got those bids and made a recommendation to our board for completing that work. And let's go to the next slide. I think you know about the facilities master plan that's uh, been contracted with the McMahon group and uh, we are starting to uh, pass information to McMahon on our facilities. Um, so that work is uh, in process. And finally, uh, the Mountain View pool, uh, pool solar heating uh, says here that it's out for bid. We've actually now contracted that with Phoenix uh, and uh, they are now in the process of getting bids, uh, sorry, not bids, permits, um, permits from the county. We'll see how that, how long that takes, but um, they're on top of it. And as soon as we have those permits, we'll begin uh, construction of that um, solar heating at Mountain View main pool. And that's what I have for you today. Thank you. Thanks, Ray. Appreciate all your work. Next on our agenda is Terry Dempsey, who's going to give us our February financial update. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, we will do the February uh, financial update now. And uh, go ahead and next slide. Uh, cash, uh, how are we doing with cash? Operating cash is uh, 6.8 million. Uh, just completed the first uh, installment for the 2024 dues. Um, the reserve cash right now is 4.8 million. The uh, 2024 expenditures are budgeted for $3.6 million for reserve. Uh, CIF cash is 1.3 million for a total of $13 million in cash right now. Next slide. Uh, next slide is our uh, summary income statement. Uh, February net income before depreciation is 151,000. It was better than budget by 22,000. It's mostly due to restaurants having a good month. Um, total amenities had net income of $796 and were better than budget by about $26,000. Uh, restaurants were better than budget by $45,000, which is a good month for restaurants. Uh, both Mountain View and Preserve uh, restaurants both had net income for February. Uh, February golf is $22,000 worse than budget, uh, with the front nine still being closed until April. Fitness had a subsidy of $3,000. 
and was worse than budget by about a thousand dollars but they're still having a good month uh, had a good month in February uh, theater and lifestyle combined had net income of seven thousand dollars and was better than budget by five thousand next slide Uh, next slide shows our amenity revenue. Overall, our uh, revenue was less than budget by $84,000, $85,000, see circled up there. Um, the uh, restaurants were a uh, little, little worse than budget on the revenue side by 2.8%. Um, restaurants had, did have net income for February, which means they're doing a good job controlling their actual uh, expenses and, and their costs to run the restaurants. Um, combined golf revenue was worse than, worse than budget by 20% uh, due to Mountain View closure until April. Uh, lifestyle and theater revenue were both better than budget. Fitness revenue better than budget by about $5,000 and 22% over budget in February. Okay, next slide. Uh, wages as a percentage of revenue. Uh, with, the, with, with this metric, we can see how we are managing our, her, how our directors are managing their wages against revenue. Uh, Mountain, Mountain View Bar and Grill wages as a percent of revenue is 54.4%. Uh, budget was 57%, so better than budget there. Uh, preserve Restaurant was 42.8% on a budget of 49.8%, so better than budget. Theater is slightly under budget, and uh, fitness was 83.6%, uh, which is a little worse than their budget of 79%. Mountain View, uh, Mountain View golf wages as a percentage of revenue was 42% on a budget of 30%, and preserve golf was 44.2% on a budget of 40%. And most likely, um, the reasons for some of these being lower is because uh, our revenue is down a, a bit in all, all those categories. Um, next slide. Uh, oh, this is pretty bad. You can't hardly see that. Sorry. Um, operating expenses as a percent of revenue. Our operating expenses are what keeps the property functioning and, and in working order. Uh, G&A expenses as a percent of revenue were slightly better than budget at 31.5%. Uh, this is the result of revenue being greater for on, on late fees and interest income in February. Uh, facilities uh, was better than budget by 24%. Uh, facilities wages are lower than budgeted. Uh, common area maintenance is at 12.7% and wages are lower than budgeted. Uh, patrol came in at 3.7% which is better than uh, what they had budgeted. So, uh, next slide. All right, this is restaurants combined, uh, their income statement. So, uh, we rolled out a new metric in January, which is prime cost, and it was the suggestion of uh, real foods that we, uh, that we do this. And prime cost is basically the cost of sales plus wages plus burden. We take that as a total of the percent of revenue, okay? So combined restaurants had a net income of $9,208 and beat budget by $44,000, which was a real good month for restaurants. Uh, restaurants combined, their prime cost is 87% for February. Private industry average is 90 to 105%, so they're doing much better than what the uh, industry average uh, is expected. Uh, f and revenue was less than budget by $10,000, but their costs were better than budget by $58,000, so they've done a good job controlling their costs. Uh, next slide. All right, so Mountain View revenue was $3,000 less than budget. Uh, Mountain View prime cost came in at 88%, which is better than the average, uh, industry average. Uh, Mountain View had net income of $1,451, better than budget by about $26,000, and year-to-date is better than budget by $15,000. Okay, uh, next slide, please. All right, this is the preserve res uh, results. Uh, so pres preserve restaurant uh, was uh, $7,000 um, 
revenue was seven thousand dollars less than budget for February, uh, but the prime cost for February was eighty six percent, so less than uh, the the uh, industry average. Uh, Preserve had a net income of seven thousand dollars, and is better than budget by seventeen thousand um, dollars. Year to date is uh, seven thousand dollars better than budget. Okay, next slide. Uh, this is the cost of goods on food. Um, a lot of discussion about this. Um, cost of goods on food for February was 34.4% 4, 34 for Mountain View. Year to date, they're around 35%. And preserved food cost is 45%. And year to date is 48.84%. All right, in our meetings with Real Foods, they said that our COGS for preserve should be around 44%. We're around 45%. Um, we did see a spike to 54.1% in January. Uh, that was an inventory taking error and that got corrected. So we've seen that drop back down. Um, let's see. So preserve should be around 44% and the cost of goods at Mountain View they, they thought it should average around 34% uh, and uh, um, these, these expectations and a little bit higher uh, COGS are based on the type of, um, um, type of facilities we have whereas we, we, you know, people are in a resort community and, and they expect certain, uh, certain levels and certain prices. So that's kind of where they're getting that information from. Okay, next slide. Uh, golf combined, this is their income statement for February. Um, February combined golf was 85% uh, worse than budget um, with a prime cost of 50% and their budgeted prime was uh, 45%. So total golf subsidy is $13,000 for February. Year to date subsidy is uh, $99,000 that was worse than budget. Uh, next slide. Uh, Mountain View golf results. Uh, Mountain View revenue for February was worse than budget by about $75,000. Year to date is worse than budget by $186,000. Prime cost was 53% and budget was 41. Uh, Mountain View had net income of $445. Uh, but this was worse than budget by about $32,000. Year to date has a subsidy of uh, $46,000. And that was short of budget by 98,000. Uh, Mountain View Front Nine is closed until April. Uh, this extended closure was not incorporated into the budget when we did the planning. Okay, uh, next slide is Preserve. Uh, preserve Golf, uh, Preserve Golf revenue was less than budget by about $10,000, had prime costs of 48% and had a subsidy of 14,000. Uh, which is better than budget by $10,000. Year to date, uh, Preserve Golf has a subsidy of $65,000 and is just a little bit worse than budget by about $1,000. Okay, thank you for your attention. Enjoy the rest of your day. Terry, thank you for that update. Chuck, you're gonna brief us on the UWC we did for the R&R &R committee? Sure, thanks. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to reinstate Kim Cox to the Rules and Regulation Committee. Did we already do that? Right, we would. Yeah, I think all we're doing is is briefing that we did it. We we have uh, in, installed a uh, UWC to reinstate Kim Cox for to the Rules and Regulation Committee. Right. So Kim was a former member of the committee, uh, left the committee for a few months, uh, requested to come back to the committee. Uh, Chuck worked with us as a board. Uh, this happened shortly after our last board meeting, and we did a unanimous written consent to put Kim back on the Rules and Regs Committee. So welcome back, Kim. Uh, next on my list is uh, Golf Committee. Uh, it has some new members. Thank you. Um, it's not on the agenda, but I wanted to nominate two 
new members to the golf committee based on the work that they've already done on the golf committee and the recommendations from that group as well as the chair, Lee Lexall. I'd like to nominate Brad Nickham and also Bill Messick to the golf committee. Uh, you have their bios in front of you, so I'd like to make that nomination. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second. So I have a motion and a second to approve the addition of Brad Nickham and Bill Messick to the golf committee. Any discussion with the board? Any discussion with our residents? All board members in favor, raise your hand and say aye. Aye. Thank you. Are they here? I don't think. Brad, Bill, are you out there? Oh, there is Bill. If you'd stand up and wave your hand, Bill, and welcome to the golf committee. <clears throat> Okay, I'm going to invite Walter. Uh, he's going to give you an update on where he and the staff are in producing key performance indicators. And this is part of our strategic planning initiative that we rolled out at our 10 January meeting. And Walter and his staff have been very aggressive in putting together their plans to support our plans. Thank you, Matt. Hello again. Um, all right, so <clears throat> do you have the next slide, Rick? Okay, kind of an eye chart here, but basically what is a key performance indicator? Um, so key performance indicator is something that we're going to use to measure a target or a goal. And as you've seen from the strategic plan, there are many goals. So we need something to kind of measure that. Um, it's going to help us organize and determine what we need to track and how to focus what we're tracking. So basically that's a KPI. It's a way to measure um, a goal or somewhere we want to go. Um, at the heart of the KPIs is basically data. We have a lot of data. In the past uh, many years I've been here, the data is out there. There's a lot of different data points that float around. But we've never made an effort to collect all that data and start tracking it over time or comparing it to last year or last month. So we're going to collect data. We're going to kind of put it together in an organized manner. So that's basically what a KPI is. Go ahead and go to the next um, slide. <clears throat> okay, so why do we need KPIs? Well, again, you're familiar with the strategic plan and the nine goals that the board have put out there for the strategic plan. Now, each of these nine goals, let me remind you, um, one of our directors have been assigned to um, focus on, this, on these goals. So now what I've done is I've gone back to my directors and asked them to come up with KPIs, ways to measure how we're doing compared to these goals. But not only these goals, we also have internal goals that um, aren't part of the strategic plan, but um, so they came back to me with um, their idea of what KPIs we should be measuring. So next slide. This again is another eye chart. Uh, it's really not um, important that you know exactly what's going on here, but uh, this is just showing you that um, each of our directors have come in and they have suggested different KPIs. Um, so really would like maybe only three or four KPIs per director because at, at some point, too much data, too much information, we're going to spend all day trying to collect information. So I'd like to limit it to about four, three or four KPIs per director. Now there's a few exceptions here. Um, this line here is marketing and the marketing folks do so much for all of the other directors that a lot of their KPIs can help us measure um, what the other directors or departments are doing. Uh, a lot of their KPIs may cross into food and beverage, you know, the, the satisfaction um, that you have at food, food and beverage and other things like that. A lot of that comes back to marketing. The other part of the KPIs is this whole block down here, and that's finance. That's Terry. 
So every month, um, Terry produces the financial reports. We're going to pick up a lot of those and maybe put some of those, like you saw just recently, he put it into graphic form so that it's easier to understand. It's not just numbers. You can look at them. You can compare um, from year to year what we're doing in terms of um, financials. So that's really what this looks like. Um, it's, it's, it's quite a lot of information. Most of the directors have already given me example KPIs. Um, so go ahead and go to the next slide. So this one you've already seen, Terry just showed it, and this is the KPI to track uh, food cogs in the restaurant. And again, you know, from tracking back in 2017, not all our KPIs have that much data, but Terry was able to reach back to 2017 and bring it up to the current date, and he, you can see how KPIs are going. And my prediction is this KPI at the preserve is also going to be on a downward trend for a little bit once we um, get our new chef um, oriented up there. And as he starts working, I'm pretty sure these KPIs are going to start staying down here at the lower levels. So again, KPIs help us look at this, help us um, see if we're in the right direction, if, we're, uh, if the trend is correct. Uh, next slide. Again, I mentioned marketing. Marketing has a bunch of different KPIs out there. This one happens to be, when we send out an e-blast, we can tell who opens it and what they did with it. So we send you an e-blast. If you just throw it in the trash, okay, it, it doesn't count. But if you open it, we can tell. So here in November, you can see that about 60% of the people opened the e-blasts that we sent out. Um, here in December, again, about 60% of the public opened the e-blast we sent out. And then we compare it to what the industry standard is. Industry standard is maybe just above 30%. So our marketing team can tell us that the folks here in Saddlebrook open more than, open the emails we send more than national standards. So, that, so that's good, that's a good indication. Uh, the other one here is what would they call a click-through rate. So once you open, an email, if there's a link or something for you to click on there, then we also get feedback on if you went, if you are interested enough in that email to move on and look at something. So the e-blast goes out and says, you know, road closed, whatever, click here to see the map, and we can see if you are interested enough to, you know, click through. So again, this is an example of one of the many KPIs we have to, um, to help us here this year. So next slide. All right, so really the, to wrap this up to why, why KPIs, you know, why are we doing all of this, is really to build a KPI culture is what I'm calling it. And this is really a change of culture for the staff. Up to this point, we've had a lot of data, we looked at a lot of data. Every once in a while, we'd go back and, you know, dig up data and re reproduce different graphs. But what I wanna do is this year, we have a new North Star system that's producing a lot of good data for us. It has some more reports that we can pull from. So with that capability, we can look at the numbers more. We can, we can do more analysis with the numbers that we have available. Now the numbers, I say numbers, it's not always numbers. A lot of it, you saw one big block of financials, but there's other types of numbers. You know, there's how many covers are at the restaurant. You know, how satisfied are you at the, at the restaurant? You're going to see a lot more surveys coming out because we're trying to grab data to drive some of these KPIs. Patrol is going to want to know how they as a patrol are doing. How are they perceived in the community? So I think um, Dale just released a survey on patrol. Um, fitness center. The fitness center is going to have ways for you to feed back to them on their classes and and different um, aspects that we want to know there. So you're going to see a lot more interaction between you and us collecting information. So hopefully this focuses us on the target areas that we need to improve on or where we're doing good and we should keep doing it. So that's the whole goal here and to build that culture. So timeline here is hopefully by mid-year, actually next month I want to have a good example of all the KPIs from the directors and of course you know, we might say, well, we like this one, we don't like this one. So by the end of the year, I hope to have a pretty good set of KPIs that um, become pretty static and we can just um, update them and make decisions off of them. 
So that's the update on KPIs, why we're doing KPIs, and it really goes hand in hand with the strategic goals and giving the staff a new culture of really looking at the numbers and driving our decisions um, by the numbers. Thank you, Walter, for that presentation. If I could just tag on to him for a second. For those of us sitting on the board here trying to serve you and enhance the services we provide, this is all about business intelligence. And it's about having consumable information that somebody's putting some thought into to help guide decision making uh, as we go forward in efforts to achieve our mission statement and create the kind of community we all want to to live in. So, Walter, thank you. I appreciate all the wor hard work of the staff. Uh, it's been fun to watch. And um, we don't hope about anything. We do. So, uh, we have one last presentation. Uh, Mike Brenny, our election committee uh, chairman, can't be with us. He's got grandkids in. Imagine that. Um, but he's got his able right-hand man, Cash Triplin, is here. And he's going to give us an update on the replacement reserve special election that's ongoing as we sit here. Cash? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, as of last Friday, the numbers. Our goal is still 60% and we're trending tor towards that. We will probably meet that goal by this coming Friday. Uh, we don't know yeses and nos. We, don't, we won't know those until the, the day we count all of them on the same day but we do know what's electronic and paper. Uh, next slide, please. Um, you need to be a member in good standing. There's no matter, when you got 3,000 plus homes here and 5,000 or so people, there's always bills that are late. So we're basically saying you need to be a member in good standing so your bills can't be more than 30 days uh, behind. Next, please. Um, one of my f family friends said, well, my husband and I disagree on how to vote. Uh, uh, knowing the husband, I understood that. And, uh, and she said, well, which way do we vote then? I said, you get one vote per lot. So you two need to sort it out. You get one vote. Uh, one vote per lot. Doesn't matter whether you're single, married, or have, have a parent living with you. Uh, so uh, if you do vote uh, twice, neither vote will count. Uh, next, please. Uh, next. Next, please. That one's not. Okay. Um, the HOA vote now is working very well. We're getting updates. We're sorting it out. Uh, the update rate was based on... Uh, a short-term window. What I mean by that, the Arizona law allows us to have a voting process that goes from 20 to 50 days. With the guidance from the board, we went with 50 days, and uh, so the three-day reminder was too much, and you told us it was too much, uh, and now uh, that's being done at every seventh day. Uh, we have uh, a process for turning in the paper ballots, and obviously a large number of people are using it, and those are secured each night in the safe, uh, but none will be opened or reviewed uh, until we count the votes. Um, next, please. Uh, the voting's actually going very well. This is, the large, this is the first time we've ever voted for an assessment. Uh, we have a lot of participation. I think you were told four meetings ago that our normal percent is around 40% turnout for board votes. So uh, we, our turnout is great for votes, uh, so that's working. Uh, we have uh, one small change. Uh, Charlie, with all the many things she has going on, Walter uh, uh, has assigned uh, Adele to help us uh, with the administrative part of that, and she is our contact with uh, HOA Vote Now. Um, with the committees meeting regularly, uh, and uh, we're costing you a little bit of money because the questions we can't ask, we go to the board and they go to the lawyer, and uh, we've sorted out several things that way to 
to make sure that we're absolutely following the, the Arizona law, uh, the CCRs, and our regulations. And we're going we're gonna to make as absolutely as sure as possible that we count every vote correctly and each lot gets one vote. Thank you. Thank you, Cash. Well, the last thing on my agenda is to tell you about our upcoming uh, events. Let me give you this last thought. Hopefully today you got a feeling for the work that the board and the staff are doing to work collaboratively, um, to work more effectively within the community. I'm hopeful that our financial results will start to, um, to show the, uh, the effectiveness of our efforts, our combined efforts. As far as upcoming events, uh, Walter's next general manager's co coffee is on April 10th. Our next board meeting will be April 24th. And the replacement reserve fund special election meeting will be held on April 30th. And with that, I will adjourn the meeting and open it up for your comments. Here we go, man. Hank Balter, Unit 46, Lot 126. What I just we don't have a big audience, but so I got a little bit of extra, I hope. What I just want to record, say to everybody here is that we came to Saddlebrook 20 years ago and we invested in a six-figure home that some of you also have invested over seven figures for your home. So what we're here looking at is a variety of people that have different incomes and different status and where they, where they live. We've got people that own our homes, no mortgage. We've got people that have two homes that they keep up. We've got people that have refinanced homes and you've got people that have reverse mortgages. So they all got to take into consideration what we have here. Those of us who to partake in our amenities pay for that privilege. If you don't use the amenity, you don't have to pay for it. What is available, and you should just be able to decide what to use. No one tells you what to use one way or the other. The past is past. We have to look to the future. New homers are here, new homeowners retire here to partake in our amenities. We need to maintain our investment, not only in our homes, but also in our HOA too, in order to attract future homeowners when you eventually or inevitably need to move. This is what it's all about. This isn't about building a new golf course. It's about our investment in what we own and what the golf courses are a part of. We have dues that we pay, food and beverages as compared to 20 years ago is doing phenomenal. The food's better than any place you can eat out here on the same price. The menus are there, the specials are there, the chefs are fantastic. If you don't eat here, shame on you. I also need to have a group try, I don't need to have a group try to think on how I should vote by handouts or flyers or stuffing them in my mail tube. We got here by thinking for ourselves. That's how we were taught and raised. I am also taken aback with hearing members of the board take an issue of for or against something. This should be done in private. When you get up here in the public, you're, so you're a board. You're supposed to give us what the majority of the board thinks. Lastly, the board presented to Robeson as a homeowner, which he is, exactly what they presented to us. And they were upfront to us when they told us about it. They presented it to us, 
they said to us, vote yes on what they presented. That's exactly what they said, the ropes, and nobody went ahead behind anybody's back and tried to force ropes in or influence them in order to weigh the vote. So that's all I have to really say is that we live here, we own a big investment, and we've got to look to the future. And if you don't do that, we might as well all die within a couple of years and this thing doesn't make a damn bit of difference. Thank you. Thanks, Hank. I'm glad you crammed that into two minutes, sir. <laughs> Anybody else have a comment? A question? Elaine Taylor, Unit 49. I think it's safe to assume that we have a large number of residents that would like a lot more information about the workings and decisions of the board. And while we have over 5,000 residents, um, perhaps we have 50 here, about 1% of those people that are here in attendance. And we all should understand there's a large, uh, clear number of reasons why uh, 5,000 people don't attend. Many of our residents are physically out of state. Many of them are physically unable to be here. So we look at uh, how do we access information about the workings and decisions of the board. And uh, we're not looking for email blasts. We're looking for regular uh, paper trails that tell us what was done and how it was done. So uh, key, of course, uh, are uh, what happens at uh, all forms of your minutes. So I have a question, I have a comment, I have a suggestion. Uh, my question is, are these working meetings where this current uh, board leadership has decided to take action, are they recorded? No, not all of them are. No. No. Some of them are held in the ballroom, and uh, it's, uh, the recording capability there is very difficult, uh, challenging. I've certainly seen struggles with AV equipment here for a variety of, of meetings and purposes. Uh, I, I would strongly suggest that at the very least there is an audio recording, because there's simply people that would like to know the context of the decisions, and they have no way to physically be there. The second thing that I would like to look at in terms of the paper trail is the minutes. Uh, I find, it's my opinion, I find the minutes quite concise. Uh, it seems to me this is a critically important record. As you all know, I've been reviewing minutes and I have found errors of minutes that have been adopted where it says people made certain motions that in fact they were not the people that did so. And I found omissions, key omissions, like the infamous omission in November 18th, 2022, when the minutes did not even indicate that the board president wanted to move the agenda item and create a working session and do that item separately. That's a classic example of how that kind of omission can lead to a lot of misunderstandings uh, that could have been avoided. My last suggestion before I uh, quickly sit down here, I think homeowner comments are important. I would like to see a list of names, units, and just the topic of what people spoke to. So if I wanna contact someone and say, I wasn't able to be there, but could you tell me what your concern is in this area? I have the ability to do so. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Man, I've got a question. Did the, the election committee, do they know how many individual lots voted? Just, just. He's got the same days. Yeah, it, it's, uh, as of last Friday, it was uh, 1,605. Okay. Thank you. We have a gentleman that wants to speak. I will take the mic to him. Keep 
people need to hear what you have to say, and they hear it through the loop. So yes, you need a mic. Thank you. Do you know they can hear me in Oracle? Uh, I'm in Unit 33 on Clubhouse Drive. Uh, David Berg. <clears throat> uh, one thing, the restaurant at the Brook is doing wonderful. The food is excellent, and I'm very happy, and I take people there, and they enjoy it also. And one thing I'm, I hope you maybe consider is those that have been instrumental in upgrading the food uh, maybe give, be given a reward of some sort. And I hope we're paying the chef enough to keep him for a long time. Um, the second thing, I, I, I do walk uh, the Mountain View first six holes, first nine holes periodically. And there's a lot of cut down old trash that's along the cart path. And a lot of deep ruts from automobile or from uh, traffic driving over in the mud. I think somebody in golf maintenance has to take a couple of men or women if they want uh, and do the entire cart path, particularly the end of uh, uh, hole number five as it approaches uh, uh, Clubhouse Drive. It's an absolute mess and it's a disgrace. The amount of trash, I don't mean paper, I mean cut plants and old plants that are broken down. Uh, because when it opens and this, uh, this look still is, is there, it's going to look like what was done for this wonderful uh, course. Uh, I, I love living here. I never thought I would love an adult uh, community like this. I was raised in Tucson, lived in California, came back 20 years ago. And my late wife and I said we'd never live in a community like this. Well, she's passed. I have a new person in my life. And we love it here. And uh, I like the hard work you guys are doing. And I just hope you keep it up. And that uh, the whole, the whole uh, population of Saddlebrook really steps forward and appreciates your work. Even though we may disagree with some major decisions, uh, just keep up the hard work. Thank you. Dave, if I could, real quick, I'll give you a quick update on Mountain View from the perspective of your question, because it's a good question. Obviously, uh, we're in uh, the last throes of a timeline that hopefully will get that course opened up completely in a short period of time. And the golf superintendent is well aware that there are a lot of those fine-tuning issues that will ta be taken care of before we open that golf course up. So I just want to tell you that all good comments, totally, totally get it, but there are things that they'll be doing uh, probably in the next few weeks that will make a big difference in what you've seen so far. And um, anyway, I can't give you much more than that, but I, they know there's work still yet to be done. But it will be done before that golf course is open, I can assure you that. So thanks for your comments. Appreciate them. Any other comments? Ladies and gentlemen, have a great day.